Hello, hi, it's Liz here. Fancy turning this cheese box into a journal? Well, why not? <laughs> yeah, this came out the fridge um, the other day and we ate the last bit of cheese from it. And you know what it's like, nothing goes in the bin anymore without um, hubby knows to ask. He's like, you know, and it was hubby's idea, give him credit, that um, he's like, I think you could do something with that. And I thought, you know, you're right, I could do something with that. So I'm going to give it a coat of paint. This is a acrylic, a neutral grey. Um, so we're going to give the whole thing just an, a quick coat of paint just to get us started so that when we come to decorate it there's a bit of a background going on so nice and easy and just paint the whole thing grey and then I've got two other colours just to kind of smudge on to give it a, a distressed look. Just use the lid as my palette there. <laughs> How quick is that? That's the inside done of that. And let's do this as the lid. And while that's drying, while these pieces are drying, before we do the outside of the lid and the bottom and add some colour, we can think about what we're going to do for the inside, for the pages, which of course I'm going to make circular. So that'll dry in two shakes of a lamb's tail. I've got my two other colours here, which is peachy pink and dusty rose. But we will do the outsides once the insides are dry. And so, for the pages, I have used my circular die set. Um, I think it's just a, a run-of-the-mill circular die. I, I don't have the maker's name, but obviously there are many, many, many people make circular dies. And I have die cut from this um, paper pad, which is... Um, paper stash and it's memoranda. Some great papers in it and you can see that I've already cut my circles from this sheet here. So I will just show you what I have already cut using the dies. If you don't have the dies then you can easily cut round something of different sizes. So what I was thinking I have one, two, three, four, five pages. I will attach this page to the bottom and then I'll have a kind of accordion journal kind of coming out like that. Do you know what I mean? I'm, in my head, this is going to work. Um, <laughs> fingers crossed because I haven't done a trial. Um, I also have a larger circle for the top and the bottom. So once this is painted, this will go on the top and the bottom. So I've got those two ready. And then we will decorate. So that dried pretty quick. Let's do the outside. Oh, I can hear that. Now, I can hear that's rain against the window, but it wasn't due to rain today. It was a beautiful morning. 
Absolutely glorious. We were in Glasgow this morning. We went for breakfast. I had sourdough toast and scrambled egg. Mmm. It was lovely. Hubby had the avocado and some bacon. You don't need to be precise with this because I'm going to go over it with these other colours. So it doesn't matter if a little bit shining through because the outside is a kind of glossy. So it does shine through a little bit, but we're going to be covering that bit, the main middle bit with um, the paper anyway. So we won't worry about it too much. Sorry, laughing cow. <laughs> You're getting painted. This is where your fingers get all nice and painty and messy and I'll do that. Okay, so we'll leave those two pieces to dry again. And then we'll add a little touch of the other two colours. So in the meantime, we want to decorate our pages. These are going to be our pages and they're going to lift out in an accordion style. Um, so I thought a nice theme of butterflies would be nice. So I have my butterfly stamps. Let me just move that brush out the way because I start to run out of room. Um, yes, butterflies. So I've got my two old sets of butterflies. This is Penny Black Social Butterfly and this is Kaiser Craft um, Ma Masherie Butterflies. So let's uh, stamp out a butterfly. Which one will we stamp? we'll stamp this one here. I already, I'll let you into a wee secret, I have already stamped. There it's here. <laughs> I was looking for that there and I had put it over there. I have already stamped out some butterflies and I have fussy cut them. So I just want to show you how I did them. Right, let's just nudge that out of the way. This is just thin paper that was free with a magazine. And I wanted to use thin paper because I'm not sure if I heavily decorated the pages. I still want the box to close and it only closes that amount. And I didn't want to put thick um, watercolour card or anything um, on the pages to make them really really thick so I've chosen this thin paper and the other reason I like this paper for stamping the butterflies is it already means that they are coloured in so we don't need to colour them in So let's just get round these. I'm just leaving a tiny, tiny slither round. And when it comes to fussy cutting butterflies, this one, as it happens, doesn't have any of the antenna things. But I do tend to just chop them off. because when I go to glue them on, chances are 
I would pull them off anyway because they're so thin that right so you can see how although um, we've stamped it you can see a little bit of the pattern from the paper coming through just enough to give it a little bit of colour okay how are our boxes doing it's not quite dry I think it takes longer to dry on the shiny side but I think maybe we can add some of the colour maybe we can okay let's try I'm just using my acrylic block and I just need a little bit of that and a little bit of this oops splat a little bit that turned out to be a big bit. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can just go round using a dry brush in just a tiny amount this time because I just want to add just a hint, a hint of colour. It's almost like you're just distressing it a wee bit. Similar like as if you were inking the edges although you're using paint so you really just and I don't mind if there's little white bits shining through it all adds to the the distressed look don't you think so yeah so we were in Glasgow again this morning um, I was wanting to check uh, the stationer WH Smith for this month's Daphne's Diary but it's not there yet so that was disappointing but right, we'll just go around so this is the bottom so it will have will it have a we oh, need to think about what we're doing with the bottom whether it will have a sheet of paper in it or not I might do that but anyway, we'll scuff the edges like that. Right, let's scuff the edges of the bottom. Because the paper more or less goes to that little lip so we can just do round that lip a little bit. That's good. And let's do this. We'll do the inside. Oh, that was quite a lot there. Doesn't matter. It all adds to the, the texture. Some bits will have and some bits won't have so much. So yeah, so checked for my magazine. No luck. Anyway, it'll get there. I dare say it's maybe been delayed. It was due out in the shops according to what I've read online. It was due in the shops on the 1st of March, but quite often it's delayed. It was delayed a week last time, so I'm not a... Uh, I'll check again another day. Right, let's do this paler colour. Again, I just want a, a little drier amount. Just here and there. Just gives it a little bit of a lift. That will shine through. The pink will shine through and a little bit there. Get that edge away. There we are. Maybe a little bit in the side inside. Right, 
a little bit on the edges. So the car park still is getting half used by the film people. The back girl film. I don't know what it is they're doing. They seem to be there a long time. They were away and then they came back. And then they went away and now that's them back again. I don't know. They must be filming at different bits at a time. Right, last bit for this. A little bit there and a little bit there. That paler colour just lifts it a little bit, I think. Makes it quite grungy looking. Yeah, right, let's leave that to dry and let's move that out of the way. And we can concentrate on our pages. So that's the top and that's the bottom. So I've got, let me see what I've got, move the paint out of the way. So for the background, I've picked out this stamp set, which is Tim Holtz Faded Type. And I was thinking of maybe using the numbers. Or do I want a little bit of alphabet? Yeah. A little bit of alphabet. Okay. Right, where's my, here we are, my old magazine. And we will stamp on top of this. Let's get a nicer page. Right, okay. So we want a a bottom that's just, in fact, I'm going to leave the bottom plain and just put the bottom on like that and we'll decorate the top because that'll just sit. That'll be the bottom. I wonder if we should decorate the inside. Well, we can cut another circle for that. Right, okay, let me stop wittering and let's get an acrylic block for this so we'll take the butterfly off there i don't think that's going to stick very well i should really wash this <laughs> there's a lot of things i should really do and i don't i don't clean stamps i don't wash the acrylic block I'm a non-cleaning crafter. <laughs> right, just on the edge, I think. Somewhere there. Perfect. And for the lid, for the... I have this and this. Good, good. And also some of this tape. Yeah, why not? Let's start at number four. I'm going to put that underneath a little bit. Okay, I think this is sticky. Yes, it just peels off. Let's just put it, put it to the side. Then we can have that and that. Like that. And maybe a little label or something underneath. I've got my two ticks. I've got 
got a little oh ah, here we are excellent that was a quick a quick find sometimes i'm running out of room <laughs> sometimes you can look for things for so long and other times you can just put your hand on to what is perfect think my stitch round the edge actually with the machine what do you think I think we will I think that would be cool so that's our lid and that's going to just sit perfectly like that. Mm -hmm. We'll leave the bottom just now because we're still to decide. Yeah, we'll definitely put something on the bottom. And we'll need to maybe put something on the inside there. Right, so let's not stick that down until we've decided whether we're going to stitch round because I think we might. Now we're going to do the same sort of thing with all the pages. It's going to be a collection of butterflies and labels. So all the butterflies have been stamped using those two sets that I showed you. just move them around there and let's just stamp before we add so each page I think will get a bit of stamping a bit of stamping the right way up a label and a butterfly. So really easy. And I think stitched round. I know not everyone has a sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, just a thin liner pen, a, thi a fine nibbed pen. Liner pen? Where did that come from? A nib, a fine nib will give you some flow stitching so that's going to be our top page so stamp right way up let me bring it over so you can see me. <laughs> we did more stamping in that one. So this has got quite a lot of stamping showing up. Stamping. Label. Put the label up high in this one just to give it a little bit of different feel. And because it says specimen at the top. We want to see that. And we will put that butterfly there. So that's page two. Where did I put page one? <laughs> Stuck to the bottom of the magazine. Yes. Page one, page two. Let's pile them up over there so that I don't lose them. Right. Stamping. Why 
things are always upside down. There we are. there and we've got this one for this one collection of specimens and we'll do that one that way slightly to the side I think the backs I think I'm just going to leave it's a double-sided um, paper so the backs are already kind of decorated. I think, mm, maybe not. Maybe you could add some just plainish paper if you wanted to use it to actually journal in. Just add some plain paper to the back or some tea dyed paper or whatever, some lined paper. And then you could use it as an actual journal. I think I'm just going to use it for display. It's quite a neat little thing, I think. It'll look nice on my shelf. Second last one. We'll put the specimen over there this time and the butterfly here. What would we do without butterflies? <sighs> butterflies and toadstools. <laughs> what did I decide? It was over here, wasn't it? So, yeah, so we came out the the place that we had our breakfast and walked along the street and there's a charity shop nearby that you pass on the way back to the car park, a thrift shop and they had a little um, old vintage suitcase in the window, a little mini one. Oh and I quite fancied it. Right, so this one like that, we'll stamp it first. I was watching um, my friend Barbie from Nelly and Ruth Designs and she recently did a craft room tour. Oh, you should have a look. She's got a brilliant room. It's absolutely beautiful. So she keeps her fabric and whatnot in little suitcases and I was quite jealous and um, I mean I've got mine in baskets so as you know I've, um, I'm lucky I've got a, a room as well so I've got my uh, my fabric and whatnot in baskets but you know you know what it's like once you see something that somebody else has got <laughs> It's like, oh, that's nice, and you could have it out and display. So I spotted this. It was in the window, this little suitcase. It looked like brown leather. I thought, hmm. So anyway, I went in, and it was a young girl. And she was really helpful. I says, I wonder, I says, would it be a terrible bother to get that little suitcase out the window so that I can have a wee look inside? Because... It's all very well, but you still want it in half decent nick. You don't want something that's just mentally old and all torn and whatnot. Although you could diddle it up, I suppose. But anyway, so she got it out the window for me. She had to move this big uh, display, um, a mannequin and poof, whatnot. I felt quite bad, but she was really nice. So there we are. But... Then they tried to open and there was a guy there as well and he came over at that point because the girl wasn't having any luck in pushing the little bits open so that the, the you know, the bits that push in on either side and they wouldn't move. And so it's obviously been locked at some point and nobody 
had to key in. So, so I thought, well, that's not any use. Can't even open it. It was <coughs> shut fast. And um, so that was that. So I didn't get to see the inside. In fact, nobody will get to see the inside. So maybe some they're just selling it just for a display purposes. Right, um, so that's my pages done. And I'm going to go and take them to the machine and I'm going to stitch round the edges. Okay, that's them all stitched to within an inch of their life. <laughs> Stitching round in a circle is a little bit of a challenge, but um, yeah, but then s stitching straight for me is a challenge as well. So maybe a circle is actually a bit easier. So I want to do a little finishing touch to the pages. Um, I want to add a, a little bit of this black tape to these inside bits so let's just randomly choose little bits and hopefully we can get the backing off easily yep so we'll just little bits of this I think just kind of makes it pop a little bit it doesn't really need to make any particular sense the numbers I think that's a nice little, nice little addition. Four, five, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> oh, that one came off easy. Maybe the bigger bits came off easier. So whoever collected these butterflies has numbered them all very carefully. The end. <laughs> How did that happen? Oh, it's there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, let's just cut off two bits while we're here. So that's Tim Holt's, um, I can't remember what it's called, uh, I haven't, I, I tend not to keep any packaging because I keep everything in little baskets and um, that comes in a, an alphabet one as well. Maybe we should have put some alphabet on some of them. Oh well, maybe next time. <laughs> but it's um, it's Tim Holtz um, and I'm sure if you just searched for Tim Holtz black tape you would probably more than likely find it right that's the pages so we want to join them so I've, my thought process was it needs to be something bendy and because it's a circle I don't want to use card or paper and then end up with an edge so then I was thinking maybe a bit of ribbon or a bit of a uh, fabric of some sort and, and then I thought of this now this is tape as well but it's um, fabric tape and it's also um, by Tim Holtz so I think we'll join each page, make a little hinge and that will hopefully do the trick with that. But I'm going to set these aside just now and let's just decide that this is the lid finalised and get it stuck down. And this is the bottom and then that's going to be the inside of the bottom or the inside of the lid really because the bottom one here is going to be stuck to the bottom one there. Yeah, is that right? 
Yeah, so this needs to go down anyway. Let's get the book and let's start sticking um, this side. So, yeah, so that was, that was a shame about the wee suitcase because it was a good wee size and I would have quite liked to copy Barbie and get something out and display but it wasn't to be but no doubt I'll come across one at some point I think this is going to turn out quite nice actually if it still fits <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. I think we'll put some washi around the edge right so if we lift the lid and we want the pages to be sat in there like that you know I could probably would could have done with a little bit of a uh, thicker anyway we'll see how it goes this is just a prototype <laughs> that's what we'll see anyway so that one gets stuck down and then the rest come out like that so we don't need anything in the inside so we've put one in the inside of the lid that's it thought through so the inside of the lid so that's the right way up and we will stick down this way so that's the inside done that's fine. We were going to put washi tape around the edge. Now, are these little edges the same size? I think they are about the same size. So I've got two thin washies here. Will that fit on there? Yep, yeah, just about. And this one, maybe put that one on the bottom, or maybe, let's see, that would be better, that one and that one. Or this one. No, the blue. Right, the blue and the grey. Right, and I'm just going to put well, just a little dot of glue just to help the washi along. There we are. And let's just hope for the best. Round in a circle can be quite tricky. Well, that's coming apart there, that needs glued. Excellent. Yep. I'll maybe need something stronger. Oh, 
I'll leave it just now. And put this one on here. This is just a kind of scripty washi. I think this actually might be a nice project in a kind of more modern um, scrapbooky paper. You know, nice bright colours and that would be nice to use up some of my more modern um, colourful papers and ephemera and whatnot. Right, let's see, I think we need to mend that. Let's bring out the big guns. <laughs> okay, this is quite near the bottom, so it takes a wee minute to... There we are. Right. I'm going to use a little clothes peg. What I don't want is the clothes peg to be stuck, but I will just hold it just now. Right, what we're we going to do next? Next, we are going to join up our pages. Mm -hmm. So, bottom's covered. Let's done. And we're going to use this for the pages. And we need to figure out which way round each one's going to go. So this and this. Gets in fact, they all just get joined. It doesn't matter. They all just get joined the same way, don't they? Mm -hmm. So about that much, I think. Let's go for it. And... Right, okay, <laughs> I'm winging it a bit here, let me see if I can get this off, right, so about there, and there, and a piece on the top. Yes, so that, uh -huh. right, so we can go along and just do them all the same, is that right? Doesn't matter which way around it is because it's both, it's got a back and a front. Right, that's stuck, so I don't want my peg. So let's cut out how many hinges will I need. And we'll need one, two, three more. So, 
one. Two. Three. I was trying to think there, do I need to cut that? But I think I do. I do need to cut it into two. So we've been watching um, Gil The Gilded Cage. Oh, it's pretty good. Um, it's by the same guy that wrote Downton Abbey. So it's it's not the same, but it's it's of a kind of similar vein. Um, but it, this one's instead of like set in the UK in a state of home, this one's set in New York, and it's all about old money and new money and the the new money ladies trying to. Right, no, we'll put it in the back first. Stick to the way you were doing it. She's trying to get herself into the, um, you know, the, the, all the the dinner parties and the 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 things that the old money are doing because she wants to be part of that society, and are, they're very rich and they built a big mansion. I don't know. And Seventh Avenue or whatever it was. And um, so this is the lid for this one. So she's starting to be included in things. And uh, so there's quite a lot of intrigue. It's quite good. because we just finished watching um, Inventing Anna, which was very good. Right, and this last one here, and this last one here. This better all work after doing all this. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a girl from Ozark. She's very good. The curly haired girl in Ozark is same um, Anna. So that's quite good. But that's done now. Right, let's see. So this will go like this, this, this and this. Wow. Yeah. I wish it was a wee bit fuller, to be honest. Wish it bulked up a bit. Maybe I can add more to it. What do you think? Are we going to stick that one down or are we just going to make it so that it can come out and be added to? Maybe, maybe if we add things to the back, it will make it bulkier. I think that might be what I do, but not today, because I think I've blethered here long enough. But you get the idea. What do you think? I'm pretty pleased with this. This is quite cool, from a cheese box. Let's see if we can... Yeah. That maybe needs a wee bit more stickiness. So 
Blumen. Maybe I could put a wee handle or something with a wee button here so that you know to lift that up. Yes, there's extra things I think can be done with it. I think if we decorate the back, that would be an idea. Maybe we could put toadstools on the back. What do you think? I'm not going to do it just now. Oh, how did that get in there? But maybe it would be a nice idea. Here's the toadstools. To put them in the back and build it up a wee bit more. Why is that got a... Oh dear. <laughs> there we are. Oh, my stitching leaves a lot to be desired. We could put toadstools on the back. Or maybe some florals. Yes, I'm going to put something on the back. But in the meantime, I'm happy with the fronts. Or maybe you could make two and keep them all in the box. Or even three. You could make one with butterflies, one with toadstools, one with florals. Keep them all in the box because it says collection specimens. And that would be your wee box of round journals. I think that might be, that might be a thing. Maybe I'll make two more. And then I'll maybe do a flip sh flip through once, because that would fill up the box nicely. Yeah, that's a thought. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. If you've liked the video, a thumbs up would be brilliant. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.